Hey everyone, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jones from Nintendo Prime, and this is Prime... Wait, who the heck... Hey, who wrote this script? Eric! Eric! Hey dude, I thought we canceled Prime News months ago. No, seriously. Like, why are we doing this again? Well, why did we cancel it anyways? All right, bad lighting, bad green screen work, blurry camera visuals, terrible audio, unfunny. Can you believe, like... I'm unfunny? Guys, like, seriously, me, Nathaniel Robojance, unfunny, whatever. Eric, you're fired! I had to pay him, I think, before I could fire him. Anyways, how's it going today, folks? Today's first story is actually about an upgraded Nintendo Switch. Nintendo announced this morning that they are basically replacing the original Nintendo Switch model with a whole new model. If Actually, if you've been following my channel for a little bit, you would understand what Nintendo's doing here. They did an FCC filing not too long ago going over changes to the OG Switch, and those changes appear to have arrived. And the only major thing we're going to see front-facing as consumers beyond new packaging, because it did change the color of the package, it's now red, kind of cool, uh, is that it's going to have longer battery life and not an insignificant increase. Uh, we're looking at four and a half to nine hours in comparison to the original two and a half to 6.5 hours. Now for an actual game reference, Breath of the Wild on the OG Switch lasts about three hours. On the new one, it's going to last five and a half hours. That's insane. That's, that's wow. It's a two and a half hour increase. Now I'd be like, how are they getting this? Well, if you paid attention to FCC filing and what's happening with Switch Lite, Switch Lite is actually going to be using a new Tegra X1 chip, a shrunk down 16 nanometer version that is allowing that to also have better battery life. However, only slightly so compared to the original Switch while running at the exact same specs. Chances are the shrunk down 16 nanometer Tegra X1 is now going to be implemented into the original Switch. And doing that is going to give us massive battery life improvements. Now, you might be like, shouldn't this mean they could increase clock speeds and all that? Well, the fact we're getting such a massive battery boost should let you know that Nintendo is just going to be running the 16 nanometer X1 at the same time base clock speeds as the original Tegra X1 inside the original Switch. So you're not going to see likely any performance bumps here. Nintendo's not touting it. In fact, they now list two separate battery versions on their official website for the original Switch, but with the exact same specs. So this should let you know Nintendo is planning to just use the same specs all around this time. Uh, and that's not a surprise. I said all along the SEC filing was not a reference to a Switch Pro. Now I've kind of got that right and could put that in my bag of tricks of, hey, look, call back to that. I it's like I have experience or something with board manufacturing and that I actually worked at an assembly factory for this kind of stuff before. I mean, wait, no, I didn't. I mean, what? I, anyways, <laughs> um, that's neither here nor there. The point is this, the Switch is coming. It's releasing uh, from August on forward for the entire world from, you know, uh, Japan and Europe and all that. They're, they're at different time frames of release, but from August moving forward, we're going to start seeing them released uh, everywhere. And you'll be able to tell the difference when you go buy a new Switch because it'll have a red packaging versus the original packaging. So that's something to keep in mind. It's going to cost the exact same price as the original Switch as well. So you're just getting an improved battery life. And again, why would they do this? Not just for the battery life improvements, but because it also streamlines the manufacturing, makes it so they're only making one chip for both versions of the system. They can also do the revised board for for both versions, revised memory, RAM, all that stuff. They could just literally streamline it and make as many of these as possible for as cheap as possible and use the same hardware inside both systems, one just being smaller than the other. It just makes a lot of sense and it's just Nintendo slowly making improvements to the Switch over time. I do believe a Switch Pro is coming, but uh, let's wait till 2020 to probably talk more about that. Next on docket is Joy-Cons or Joy-Con Drift. You know, when you're using your Joy-Con and it doesn't actually go where you're telling it to go or you don't touch it and your character starts running across screen. What the heck is going on? Now, actually, we've talked about how to fix Joy-Con Drift. Um, spoiler alert, it's electrical contact cleaner. But if you want to watch that whole video about how to fix it, go up there because I like money. So give me clicks. <laughs> um, Kotaku actually has run a story now about Joy-Con Drift, which is one of the main media outlets out there for video games. And that article is garnering lots of attention at the time of publishing this. I think it's close to 400,000 total views uh, and rising quickly. And they are starting to draw attention to the fact that Joy-Con Drift is a major 
problem with the Switch hardware. Now we've been talking about this on YouTube for a long time. If you just type in Joy-Con Drift into the search engine on YouTube, you're gonna find hundreds of videos with hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of views about complaining about the problem, fixes for the problem, how to replace the joystick. Although if you replace the joystick, it's just gonna happen again because the only re replacement joysticks that work with the Switch use the original joystick design. And Nintendo so far has not acknowledged there's even a Joy-Con Drift problem in the first place. So in part, this Kotaku article is actually exactly existing to benefit us as gamers to put pressure on Nintendo to finally answer questions about Joy-Con Drift. Now, I have been told by some people that I know in the industry that they have actually asked Nintendo about this stuff and they have declined to comment in interviews, which is why we have not seen any comments from Nintendo. So it would be nice to see Nintendo address it, especially with the Nintendo Switch Lite around the corner. The Switch Lite is obviously not, doesn't have detachable Joy-Cons. So like at least with the detachable Joy-Cons, you could just buy a new Joy-Con you can't do that with a light. You have to buy a whole new system if you don't, if you're not comfortable taking apart the system and buying a new joystick. So uh, this is a, a major issue that Nintendo needs to address. Uh, maybe it's addressed in the in the Switch revision, I guess as we call it, or in the Switch Lite. But if it is, it would be nice for Nintendo to acknowledge that, so us OG Switch owners might know. Hey, is it is is now the time to trade in and upgrade and all that? Uh, I don't know if it is the time, but it would be nice to find out. And uh, Nintendo needs to comment on it sooner rather than later. Speaking of Joy-Cons, Nintendo has finally, finally announced new Joy-Con colors. Uh, those colors being blue, yellow, and purple, orange. They are releasing on October 4th. And again, we hope they come with improved joysticks. However, I won't count on that. Again, Nintendo has to acknowledge the problem before we can even begin to fix it. But hey, uh, they're finally coming. We haven't seen new colors in a long time. It's almost like Nintendo bombarded us with new colors through like summer of last year and then just stopped really weird uh but now they're re-ramping the colors up probably in anticipation of the holidays now as for these current color schemes i don't like either one of them what if they suit your fancy i'll put uh, some amazon affiliate links down in the description uh for you to pre-order them and get them for yourself heck you know what i'll throw amazon affiliates down there for the new revised switch as well and you know what why not throw some links down there as well for switch Lite? because we all need to make money right so if you're gonna spend money might as well help me out maybe no Nintendo has decided to take out Mario Maker 2 levels made by a user called Graham Pooh Bear. He makes levels at the super expert level in Mario Maker 2, and they are among the most popular levels in the game. In fact, the number one level in all of super expert mode before the takedown was actually one he created called the Pile of Poo Cos Zero G level. And Nintendo took it out. And you might think, well, because of the word poo is why they took it out. In fact, Nintendo actually took out all of his levels originally in the first Mario Maker as well. However, Nintendo contacted him uh, after the first Mario Maker and said this was a bot mistake. Basically, the bot picked up his levels and deleted them in mass, and he was allowed to re-upload those levels, and all of his super expert levels are still up in Mario Maker 1 to this day. But now it's happening again in Mario Maker 2, and it's incredibly frustrating. Nintendo has publicly stated that they don't mind the, the word poo being used, so that can't really be used as an excuse the second time around, even if the bot picked it up the first time. Nintendo has a lot of issues with Mario Maker 2 to solve when it comes to the bot. They also have some issues to solve when it just comes to the online for that game. Uh, like there, There's some intense lag happening at times. It just feels a little bit inexcusable that Nintendo should have systems in place to prevent that from happening, especially for people that have really good internet. But what do I know? Uh, I only took some networking classes in college, which isn't really the most experience you could have in this field but it is interesting to note what's happening and uh i actually am curious what you guys think about this uh do you think this is fair do you think nintendo should just leave this person alone uh he's well known in the community and again i said he makes some of the best super expert levels out there so hey when you played nes games as a child i mean maybe you're just playing them right now but whatever maybe you're a child right now but when you played them as a child didn't you wish that they could be a little bit easier? Okay, maybe you didn't. Maybe the challenge is what did it for you. But Nintendo has released a new feature today for the Nintendo Switch online service, in particular the NES online app, where now you can rewind games in, well, real time, basically. Uh, if you screw up and die in The Legend of Zelda, just rewind that SOB and do it all over again. You can rewind up to 30 seconds of gameplay. Uh, so this basically makes it so you don't need to save state and go back as much, even though there are save states. Essentially, Nintendo has just made NES games more accessible and easier. It's an optional feature. 
options are great. I think this actually makes the games a bit more accessible for my kids who won't mind rewinding and fixing a mistake they made in a boss fight or, or whatever the case may be, maybe a bad jump in certain games. So I actually think this is a really neat feature. I'm glad it's added. Does it increase the value of the online service? I mean, technically, uh, but I, I don't think this is... I don't think people are, are, are going to swoop in and buy the Nintendo Switch Online service because it has rewind in NES games. Um, I don't think that's going to be a selling point, but it's a neat feature. It's an additional feature, and I appreciate that Nintendo is actually still trying to improve the library they already have. It would be nice if they would just give us SNES games, and maybe we'll get that later this year. I don't know. I won't get my hopes up for that, though. So here's an interesting story that literally no one seems to be talking about. Nintendo might have accidentally unveiled that Hero is coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate this month. Uh, they put up this video, and it's funny because the video now, uh, you know, if you just look at it now, out of context, you would think, oh, what's the big deal? This doesn't confirm anything. You know, it talks about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 and Fortnite Season 9, which has been confirmed is coming this month now. Uh, and obviously Fire Emblem Three Houses, but then it mentions Hero for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but it doesn't give a release date. So what's the big deal? The title says Summer, yada, yada, yada. It still could be next month or arguably beginning of September. Uh, well, here's the deal. That's actually not the original title of the video. Uh, I got to give a shout out to uh, one of our fans on Twitter who pointed this out. It turns out that the original title of the video had July in it. So here's really one of two things that's occurring here. Nintendo changed the title because somebody made an oopsie, uh, an oopsie in so much that they aren't releasing Hero in July, but everything else in the video was in July, so they put July in the video, and it's just an honest mistake, and it means absolutely nothing and expect Hero later this summer. Or it was an oopsie in that somebody at Nintendo accidentally revealed that Hero is coming this month before Nintendo, Sakurai, and everyone else is willing to announce it. Again, they do like to do these kind of surprise, hey, it's coming now kind of things. So uh, again, I don't know where I sit on this story. Uh, is it true? Is it untrue? Uh, are we getting Hero this month? I mean, this actually happened. If actually Nintendo did an improper title and then corrected it. So this isn't even like rumors, but I can speculate on what this means. Uh, obviously, uh, the person who sent me the story is convinced that Hero is now confirmed uh, for this month. I don't know that I sit on that side of the fence, but uh, I think I'm just going to sit right in the middle on this one. I'm not sure. Nintendo hasn't made mistakes like this in the past often enough for me to find any sort of pattern in it. So, hey, look, Hero's coming this month, next month, or early September. We already know that. I mean, it was announced for summer anyway, so... Uh, whatever, Dragon Quest XI is coming out as well later this year, so it would make sense to get Hero out before then. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, for now, um, hey, I actually want to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think this little flub by Nintendo means this month or later? Because the one interesting fact that could support this month is every other game in that video is July. I'm just saying, like, if everything else in the video is July and it originally had a July title, what does that say about Hero? Food for thought. So here's a weird one. You want some more Super Monkey Ball? Actually, I've kind of wanted a new Super Monkey Ball for a while. Well, we're getting a Super Monkey Ball game on Switch. It's just not new. It's actually an HD remaster of Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz that originally released. I think it was maybe a launch game for Wii. I don't know. It, it released a round launch of Wii. And uh, it, it was a fun game. I, I don't think it was as good as the GameCube uh, versions. But it was fun, and we're getting it. And it's coming to Switch. PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. And it's weird because like some of those systems don't have motion controls natively in them. In particular, Xbox One and PC don't really necessarily guarantee that users have motion controls. And it was a motion control based game, which can work just fine on Switch and could be adjusted for the gyro in the PlayStation 4 controller. But uh, chances are there's going to be a whole new control method made for it, and it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. Again, though, I would have preferred the GameCube games that are already built for those control methods, and I think are even just better games. But uh, what are you going to do? This is what we're getting. Uh, hopefully uh, it turns out well. It's going to be selling for $39.99, and screw it. There's an Amazon affiliate link down there as well, because Papa's got to get paid. Uh. 
And yeah, I think that uh, just about wraps it up for today's episode of Prime News. Today's, uh, what the hell are we doing? Eric, get out, Eric, go. I fired you, go. That guy, he just won't leave me alone. He told me to bring back Prime News, he writes a script, and then he just expects everything to be okay, that nobody's going to notice Prime News has been missing for three, four months. God, what do I pay these people for? What, 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 what am I paying these people for? Whatever. Peace out. Hey, thanks for tuning into this video. I want to remind you guys, if you enjoyed it, to like it, leave a comment below, subscribe for more content, plenty more videos coming out of the way. And some of you guys are going to be like, hey, why uh, are, is Prime News back? Are we getting it for good? I don't, I don't really have an answer to that. So uh, I guess you can always hope that Prime News is back. Uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.